All right, guys, welcome back. In the last video, we learned how to create coroutines. So let's get started with a very quick recap. We first imported the async IO module or asyncio module, whatever you want to call it. Now, asyncio is just a library which will help us execute those coroutines in an asynchronous fashion in a, maybe a concurrency model. But yeah, it just basically helps us execute our asynchronous programs. Then we created a coroutine with the async keyword and we created a function. Let's just call it the main function this time. And inside this main coroutine function, let's just print out started to know whether our coroutine function is working or not. Now to execute this coroutine function, we are going to create something known as an event loop. Now, one way to create this event loop, which async IO helps us a lot in is by using the async IO dot run functionality. What this function does is takes a coroutine function inside it, which in our case is called the main function. So let's actually try executing the program and see if it works. As you can see, it printed out the text started. So it actually works. Now, what exactly is an async event loop, which we have just used? In simple words, whenever you need to execute a coroutine function, you need to create an event loop which will take a coroutine function and execute it to completion. So in our case, we needed to execute the main coroutine function. So we just use the async IO dot run functionality to create this event loop. But behind the scenes, it's not actually that easy. It's a little bit complicated. And there's a lot of depth to async event loops. Now you don't need to actually understand more than the async IO dot run functionality because you won't need it more than 99% of the time. You won't actually need it. You just need the async IO dot run functionality. So the next part is actually pretty optional. It's actually very high level or low level in programming. If you want to call it you 99% of the people won't really need it. If you're creating something like a, your own framework. So for example, if you're creating something like Django or flask on your own, then probably you will need it to monitor the progress of tasks. But don't get me wrong, it's still good to know. So when we type in asyncq.run, it actually does a lot of work behind the scenes. It creates an event loop for us, executes the coroutines, monitors the coroutines, and finally ends the event loop. We didn't have to do any of this in our example, but what if we wanted to? So let's actually create our own event loop. So we have three main aims in this part of the video. First, we want to create our own event loop, we want to create our own coroutine and thirdly, we want to execute that coroutine using our own event loop that we have created. To do that, let's create a new variable. Let's just call it loop. And inside that we are going to use the async IO dot new event loop function to create our own event loop. Let's just print out this loop variable to see what it contains. Running the example creates the event loop and then reports the details of the object. We can see that in this case, the event loop has a type of pro actor event loop object and is not currently running, but is also not closed. Pro actor event loop is just the default name on Windows. If you're running Linux or Macs, you will see something different, but don't worry too much about it. It's just like an object name that our own event loop has. So now that we have access to our own event loop, how do you run a coroutine or task in the event loop? So first let's create a task. We are going to create a new variable. Let's just call it task one. And we are going to give it a task of sleeping for two seconds by writing asyncio.sleep and two as the argument. Now this might not look like it, but asyncio.sleep actually creates a coroutine behind the scenes. And how do you execute a coroutine? By using the event loop. So let's just use our loop variable that we have just created. And we are going to use the run until complete function to execute this task. Then let's just print out done to know that our program has been completed. So if we run this program, it will first create an event loop, store it in a loop variable and create the sleep coroutine. Then execute the sleep coroutine to completion because we use the run until complete functionality and then sleep for two seconds. And then it finally prints out done when it's completed. So I hope you have a better understanding of how the async io dot run function works behind the scene and we are slowly getting the tools to do asynchronous programming. But I know it must be frustrating to not straight get into it. But trust me, you will be able to understand it so much better if you learned all the basics first. So guys, this is pretty much it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.